a new computer art tutorial here. What we're going to get into today is creating a cubist image of a car, or you could really use any subject of your choice in this. Um, you know, a car or any kind of moving subject or subject that could be possibly in action is a good subject for this type of project. So I'll go ahead and queue up another image of a Ferrari that I just thought would be a cool image to use for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that image over. I'm gonna to toggle back to home here in Pixlr E. Click Create New. I'll go full HD. Um, one thing you will wanna look out for is using pictures from the web, um, you wanna check resolutions. So I could see this is the, um, the size of this image here. And so I know that it's pretty good size and not too, too far off from these measurements here. So um, if you think WebHD or the Web 720 would be a better size for the image you pick, then you could use that size as well. So, um, but I think this should be okay. And I'll Command V, paste this in here. And as you can see, I will have to stretch it a little bit. And if your image loses a lot of quality when you do this, um, then you may want to choose another image, but this one looks like it's maintaining its quality pretty well. So that should be fine. And I'll just slide this up. Um, and then I'll just take this extra space down here at the bottom and I'll just crop that out with the crop tool. So crop tool right here, get rid of this ad. And then I'll just take my crop tool here and smooth this up and I can click apply. So that way I get rid of the extra space. All right, and let's go into how we're gonna actually start creating this cubist car image. So we're gonna use our lasso tool. And then from the type of lasso, we wanna pick the polygon lasso tool. And what we're gonna do is make sure you select your image layer here. And I'm going to just draw like a triangle. So I'm gonna put down one point, click, and then click another time, put down another point, and then two more times here to create a triangle. And then what I'm gonna just do is hit Command or Control C, depending on what kind of a uh, machine you have, and then I hit Control V or Command V to paste that slice back in. Take my Arrange tool really quickly and kind of throw this back slightly off from where it originally came from. All right, and that's how we're gonna create this effect. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to selecting Go back to selecting your car image, and then we'll go back to the lasso tool again, polygon lasso, and go ahead and select another kind of triangle slice here. Hit Command C and Command V, or Control, and could be that if you are on a, uh, a PC or a Chromebook. And then I can go there and maybe even like stretch this triangle out a little bit too to just kind of like skew or enlarge it as well. Um, so that is the process. I'll go through and do um, a few more. I think I would shoot for doing about 10 of these. So I'll just go ahead and go through really quick. And they could be more like trapezoid type shapes too. If you want to do kind of like a trapezoid type of shape as well, that works and I'll just go Command C, Command V to paste that in, and then I'll move it back down here. Maybe I'll move it out just a little bit. And again, maybe enlarge, and maybe move it just a little bit more off. All right, so there we go, we got three. Let's see, I'm going back to my uh, polygon lasso. Boom, boom. Maybe do another kind of like a diamond shape or a trapezoid type of shape here. Um, make sure that you go back to your image layer before you copy. So I have to select this image layer and copy from here. So Command C, Command V. Um, that's important because if you're not, then um, if you have one of these other slices that you've copy pasted, um, that then isn't going to have any information or any image in it to actually copy. So that's the thing with that is you, each time you have to come back to your image layer um, and click there before you lasso. So now that I've lassoed there, I'll go in with another one maybe here. 
And like I said, I would shoot for about 10 of these. I might do a couple short of that just to uh, speed up the demonstration. You know, here I'll slide that one down there. And then once you have 10 or so slices, select the car image, Command C, Command V. Then you can look at adjusting colors as well. Um, and that can be a really kind of fun part to really add a nice touch to the end of this project with. So let me see, maybe I'll just get like two or three, maybe just two more uh, of these selections off the front. Make sure I select the car image. Command Z, C, Command V and then put this back over here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'll do one last one. Let's see, I'm gonna go like here and do another trapezoid parallelogram, rhombus, one of those kind of shapes there. Select my car image, uh, Command C, Command V. Take my range tool and drag it down into place. And maybe this one I'll give like a little enlargement to as well. Just kind of like pop it back in here. Cool. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So I got kind of like this cubified image going on here, which is looking pretty sweet. Um, now what I was, like I was saying, I might go in and actually play with some of the, um, the color levels on these too for fun. So if we go to adjustment and a, a hue saturation, just like we had done with our... Um, with our uh, color wheel assignment. Color wheel assignment, you could also test out things like these other ones, temperature and tint, you know, and you could give these temperatures or tints and just kind of play with the coloration of the slices that you took out here. So maybe again, one more time, we'll go temperature, maybe I'll go a little warmer on this one and apply and we don't want to make them too too far all over the place and again maybe I can go to hue saturation for this one and try a little something different here and turn the saturation down all right we, but like I was saying don't want to go too too bright we kind of want to make these sort of subtly different i will do hue saturation for another one we can move this window out of the way here. Maybe I'll go saturation down a little bit on this one. That seems like a pretty cool little tone we got. Cool. All right, and do that with the same with the last couple. Um, again, adjustment, maybe I'll choose a different one this time. Maybe color balance. And just kind of see what we can do with this here. So this is where you're changing the RGB levels just another way to adjust tints or shades or colors. Let's say apply and maybe I'll do this last one kind of similar to how I did this one to sort of balance that out. And I believe I was doing temperature and tint on that one. So maybe we'll do the temperature up a little bit like I did there and then maybe this tint down a little bit more. Hit apply and that looks pretty nice and balanced. I think this one slice I missed last one. But again, you can feel free to be creative with however you choose to do all these different levels. No exact right or wrong methods to this, really. Just trying to create a cubist style image with a lot of fractured kind of pieces coming off. Oh, there's one last one hiding there. Haha, <laughs> found ya. All right, one last adjustment. We'll go hue saturation for this one. I kind of like the saturation going down more than up. I'll do one last one here that kind of balances out that tone. Cool. Alrighty. So there we have it. Kind of cubist car image that we've created here. Kind of like futuristic kind of car that's kind of breaking up and shattering as it is moving here down the road. Alright, so let's go ahead and make sure we say go to file save. 
save this project as a JPEG. If you want to keep your layers to work on this, continue working on it later, you want to choose PXD for, for a Pixlr document. That way you have all your layers separate. Once we do JPEG, save it as that, all your layers will compress into one. So we can't really edit the tones or anything of the layers. So if you're going to come back to it, save as a PXD. We'll say close. Make sure this file gets into my Google Drive so that then I will have it and be able to submit on Google Classroom. And that's it for today's lesson. Hope you guys have fun getting creative with your Cubist project.